Good evening and welcome to Hot Topics from the Soul. I'm your host, Dr. Valerie Parker Hagen, and I have my co-host. And good evening, good evening, and good evening, and welcome back. It's so exciting. I can't believe we've been off the air all summer. Yes, a much needed summer. And, you know, people make different shift changes, vacation and things in the summer. And for us, you know, it's that time of replenishing, but also reloading and relaunching. And so we're excited to be back. Yeah, I'm excited. I have two fabulous, incredible women, and we don't want to prolong the time. Our first guest, Shirley Carter Powell, she's um the, with an organization against all odds and she has an event coming up shirley how are you i am wonderful hi, hi dr valerie hi dr j it's, it's so great nice seeing you with you guys it's wonderful seeing you well so much has gone on this summer we have you know, a never ending conversation regarding COVID-19 and, it, you know, we have events going on. You have an event coming up September the 4th and the 5th, a two day event and it's outdoors. Now your nonprofit is against all odds. Can you tell us about your nonprofit and how you got started with that? My nonprofit is, um, um, nonprofit organization 501c3 that supports cancer survivors and patients and the underserved community in Ingham County as well as throughout the U.S. What we do at Against All Odds is that not only do we supply the um, underserved community with uh, necessary thing, you know, their uh, imminent needs as well as the cancer patient, I started it in 1999 um, and I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor myself. And when I was diagnosed and everything, I saw that when I was going through my treatment, I didn't see a lot of women like me in this support group. So I had a girlfriend to tell me and said, well, why don't you do something about it? So with that being said, Against All Odds was formed in October 1999, and we are still going strong. Awesome. Yeah. Now, here you have a portion that you serve the community called the Chicken Wing Festival, Michigan Chicken Wing Festival. The website is, is on the screen, but it's www.michiganchickenwingfestival.com because we also are live on Blog Talk Radio as well. So we want people to be able to, if they can't see, be able to hear audibly what that website is and also any websites that you want to give as it relates to Against All Odds. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Um, against All Odds, our website is againstalloddsfoundation.com. So you can find out more about the organization through there. Now, the Michigan Chicken Wing Festival. That Chicken Wing Festivals have been around over 25 years, and we needed a, something that could attract everyone to our fundraiser. So the Chicken Wing Festival is a major fundraiser for the organization. What we have is a festival that's not only about wings, but it's about bringing people together in the community. It is one of the most diverse festivals in the city of Lansing where I live. I'm, I live in the capital city of Michigan. A lot of people think that Detroit is the capital, but Lansing is the capital. And so the festival Absolutely. is located in a historical park called Adal Riverfront Park. And it takes place every Labor Day weekend, not on Labor Day, but that weekend. We call it a staycation for those families and families that are coming into town and the ones that don't want to go out of town for the holiday, then they have a staycation. They're able to come to this festival, not only enjoy multiple different flavors of chicken wings, so they get to test their taste buds. And there's all the food that is there and the music. We always have music at the Wing Festival. We deal with all genres of music. Like this year, we have a little folk music. We have some rock and roll. We have blues. We have some Motown songs. We have some inspiration. We have neo soul. And we close it out with a jazz set. 
So we have, you know, we try to have something for everyone. We have a kid zone. So you bring your kids out and everything and the kids have, you know, their whole little area. So parents and everything is fenced in. So it's a, uh, a situation where parents are there. There's a tent near the kids zone where the families can sit and the kids are like free to just have a ball in their own sweet so parents play all that. Home well, that's quite home. exciting. Yes, I love it. You know, I love to see the smiles on people's face when I never really, you know, noticed how much people like chicken wings. But when they're sitting <laughs> and eating the different flavors and the smile that's across their face from just enjoying those wings, it's it's really a good feeling when you know that you're doing something that someone loves and they're enjoying themselves. Well, you know, look like you guys have enough things for so many people because, you know, chicken wings or chicken in itself is almost universal. And you, <laughs> it's not like you guys have matched that with all the different activities that you have for the different age group. And I love the fact that you have the different genres of music, because one thing about when you gather people together and then especially when food is involved, when you have good music, good music it's a language in and of itself. So it's uplifting. People are engaged in something that the family can be a part of. No one has to feel excluded. And I think that's a great advantage. You said it's been going on now 25 years? Wing festivals have been going on 25 years, and Michigan did not have one. So in 2015, I introduced Michigan to the Super Bowl of Wing Festival by starting the Michigan Chicken Wing Festival. And now our festival is on the, the Trip 101, which is a website for travelers, everything from hotels to you know restaurants and activities throughout the US. The Michigan Chicken Wing Festival is rated in the top 28 in Michigan as number 16. Wow. Now that's great news. Now you just made a comment a little early about being in the capital city of Michigan. So many people think it's Detroit, but it is Lansing. Uh, and Lansing is actually a very nice place to be. I was there about two years ago uh, and, and truly enjoyed myself there. I, I think that uh, when you have these type of activities where you're bringing people together, I think people need to get there. So how do they get there? How do they find out more information? I uh, guess you said they can go to the website. They can go to the website, and the website has all type of information on there. As far as you know, how to get tickets. We, we do have people that travel in. Uh, we've had people as far as Germany, Japan. Now, the Japan ones, they're in town for the exchange program at Michigan State University, and they come every year, different exchange students. But we had a group of guys to come through at the last festival. They were on a holiday and one of the things they were traveling throughout the U.S. and they came across the Michigan Chicken Wing Festival. So they made Lansing one of their stops. They was doing a 30 day travel to explore the United States and the wow. Wing Festival was one. And then we had a couple guys to come in um, from the Philippines and they decided they wanted to get in our wing eating contest. Well, <laughs> Let's say there were hot wings and they didn't even eat a dozen of wings between the two of them. <laughs> so you better know the flavor of wing that you're about to bite down on it or, or it could be very short-lived. Yes. You know, with our wing eating contest, you have to sign a waiver because they are super spicy. Wow. And it, the winner has to eat the most wings in five minutes. So it's really, uh, you see the people cheering them on, go, go, go. And for three years in a row, there was a young lady that was just wiping out the guys. I've never seen a young lady eat wings like she did. Never. I've and seen I, women tear up some wings. Oh, my God. I never. She put a wing in her mouth and pull out. There's only a bone left. Wow. Uh, I, she was skilled at it. Very skilled. It reminds me of this show uh, that was on television called Hot Ones. Where yes. you the the thing was to eat the wings and answer a question, and they would be so spicy that they'd start crying, and someone would like throw up because the wings were so spicy. Yes, <laughs> well, we haven't had anyone throw up, but we've had someone to gag. 
uh, <laughs> but it's you know but they they tell us every year they're amazing wings i make the sauce every year and every year is a little different so uh, you know then we have like this year being that we didn't do the 2020 we wanted to bring back something special we have some signature wings like our blueberry barbecue strawberry barbecue so we added peach mango hot pineapple at pesto wings we have 21 different flavors of wings wow so, you know you really do get to test your taste bud there and we have wow. seven vendors with you know with wings i mean we're gonna have vegan wings gluten-free wings wait a minute where do you get vegan wings from <laughs> vegan wings we have a vegan vendor uh that's gonna and you know and i can't wait to try him he's got a buffalo cauliflower wing so I'm, wow. I'm interested in trying that wing. And so he's got a whole vegan food trailer out there. <laughs> that is diff definitely different. Now, it's going to be outdoors. Outdoors. Because it's in a park. So yes. what um, guidelines will you have as it relates to COVID? Because I know everyone is going to be concerned about that. Well, one oh, thing wow. in... In, in Michigan, uh, the county here has not really put any restriction on our outdoors events uh, because in Lansing particularly, our numbers are down and even with the variants that's out there. But what I have put in place on my own because of my concern, you know, myself, is that everyone will get a temperature check coming in. I have face masks. And the kids zone, kids are not allowed to get on any of the activities without first hand sanitizer and putting on a kid's mask. If the parents do not want that child on the mask, then I'm sorry, they can't participate in those activities that are enclosed. They are allowed to play the carnival games. And we have uh, staff there that will keep wiping them down. And throughout the park, probably every 20, 25 feet will be a hand sanitizer station for people to use. And in our VIP tent, normally we can seat 100, 150 in there. We have to cut it down to 50 people so we can space them out. So if you're not with that family, you will not be able to sit at that table with them. And we have round tables and they're spread it out. Well, sound like to me, you guys have thought ahead and that you're making provision and you're taking precaution. So it gives a whole new meaning to having some good, clean, and clean safe fun. fun. <laughs> clean fun. I awesome. mean, I, we call it the happy zone. Not a, it's a staycation in the happy zone. And, you know, and we feel that with the, between the wig, the wings and all the sweets and things that we're gonna have there, cause we have one trailer that's called Everything Cheesecakes. Wow. wow. So does, does this festival happen every years, year around Labor Day? Every year Labor Day. It's our staycation. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Okay, that's excellent. So um, Jay wanted to know, does it happen every year? But I remember you talking about making it twice a year. Are you considering that next year? It depends on what COVID is doing. I, I definitely have uh, plans already in place, but they're on hold to mm -hmm. have it in Mississippi, which is my uh, hometown and where I have a second home. Excellent. Well, it seems like you have everything together regarding that. Now, tell us a little bit about your sponsors you have this year. That's, you know, with, with COVID being into play, uh, a lot of the sponsors were reluctant to come out. And in the last couple of weeks, we've been getting calls from sponsors like T-Mobile, uh, Consumer Energy, and then Delta Dental. So they wanted, and then, you know, our local credit unions and everything. It's like they waited and waited and waited. And then they was like, you know what? I think we can do this. So they got their staff together and they see that it's outside. And then one of the things that I stress is what I put in place that some of the other festivals did not do is like my precautions that I've taken because of the steps I've taken on my own without the county saying anything. 
because what, what I wanted to do is let the number, like I limited the number of certain tickets that I sold, uh, even though people were wanting more, but it wasn't about how many tickets I could sell. It's about limiting the number of people in the park. I reduced the size of the festival as far as how large the space is, but due to the vendors and everything, and then the fire marshal concerned about the number of people that would be there, I have to spread it out even more. But I have access to do that because I have the entire park, which is a very, very large park. Well, I know you're doing this event, but there's so much more to you. As I, I had told, I guess we have extraordinary women that are doing extraordinary things. So tell us a little bit more about things that you've do, done in the community and continue to do. Uh, well, the, with the against all odds of what I'm doing, uh, like for school, back to school backpacks filled for the children, we have the hundred families. Uh, we are doing our pink and purple ride, which is for breast cancer and domestic violence. And that's where we have the motorcycle social clubs and the car clubs and things. They purchase ribbons, I mean, flags rather for their cars and everything. And then we have a parade through the city uh last year i had 150 bikers to and this is during COVID, but they kept, kept their distance we had masks on they got you know their flags and everything that was a nice fundraiser and i also do the uh christmas wish where i give families gift cards in increments of 25 50 and 100 dollars, so they can shop and do what they feel their family needs not me chosen choosing for them. I have recently, uh, in the last few months, I opened a store right inside our local mall here, where it's called Lillian's, which is my mother's name. And in that store, I have a partnership with Walmart. And what I have is need, you know, imminent needs and things for the household, like everything from toasters to fan to linen, uh, clothing for the children. And I have a partnership with Cato's Fashion, and I get clothing for the women who may have gained or lost weight. And this is a place they can come shop if they need uh, at no cost. So they have to, you know, qualify as far as a family in need. If they're in need of clothing or back to school clothes for the kids, not uniform, but the basic things like underwear, socks, and things like that, maybe a pair of tennis shoes. And in their home, I've had family, well, my microwave broke. Oh, well, we got a microwave in, here we go. My vacuum cleaner broke. Well, we got a vacuum cleaner, you know? So we just wanna make sure that our community feels Awesome. pandemic is that the need for more work is there. There's a greater need than our, you know, the basic things we were doing, like helping with copay, and, or we had families that lost a loved one, and they didn't, you know, they had to clean up their apartment, didn't know what to do with the items, but they wasn't ready to let go of them. And we've got agreement with some that we'll pay six months uh, storage for them, give them an opportunity to grieve and decide how are we going to split this up. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I knew there was so much more to you and the things that you're doing in the community because, you know, people think that there's one facet to this, the Chicken Wing Festival, but it's also about raising funds so that you can be productive in the community. And people don't realize that grassroots organizations actually have more hands on the community and able to reach out immediately to those in need instead of going through a, a process or filling out applications. As a, I mean, we fill out applications for things, even for our nonprofits, but it's not as extensive as when you have to go through the larger organizations when you need something right away. Sometimes you can't wait three or four days or a week or a month Absolutely. to get you help. Right. You need it right then. So you that's it why it's so important for nonprofits like yourself and Noel Roberts, who's coming up um, in the second half to talk about that because we're here and we need sponsorships. We need people to donate 
So not because we consider ourselves weak or non-productive, because we're going to do what we have to do. I know I certainly have been doing out of my pocket for yeah. years yeah. because yeah. the resources aren't there for people contributing. But we want to stay strong. So that's why we need uh, companies that are strong to support these grassroots nonprofits like yourself. And I applaud the work that you're doing there in the Michigan area and yeah. you know your your events coming up this week so i want people to you know look you up give that website yes uh, the website for the festival is the michigan chicken wing festival.com everything spelled out and for the nonprofit it's against all odds foundation.com and, and, you know, I can't thank you so much for having us on, for me on to talk about this because there's so much out there. Like you said, when we're the grassroots, we're the boots on the ground. And a lot of times with the larger uh, foundations and uh, organizations that are, I call them corporate giants. Yes. Uh, they are not connected really with the community they're connected in their fundraising but they're not connected in their giving back to the community there's there's a gap there uh they're connected with research but while we're doing a lot of reach research which i don't knock or anything but what about the patients what about the individual you're researching for a future uh but what about the now and that's where the nonprofits like ours, the grassroots, we're the ones that connect with the now. We don't look into the future. We connect with the now and, and meet a need now, not later. Yes, absolutely. And that's where the value comes in. And that is the difference between the giants and the grassroots. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And much success to your event and i wish i could get some chicken wings uh, absolutely <laughs> I'll, I'll... Ah. <laughs> yeah i i had the opportunity of going to one of the festivals when she started it and it was you know a lot of work <laughs> a absolutely. lot of work doing it i saw that i had a chance to see what actually goes into making it happen and it is absolutely a lot of work so you know, I do applaud Shirley's passion and heart and desire to do something for the community, especially during a time like this. So much is going on. People's hearts are breaking because they've lost loved ones and, you know, jobs are scarce. And then the jobs that are available, they don't have the skill to get the job. So, so much is going on to the psyche of individuals and it's hard to cope, but to be able to go to an event where it's outside and then have activities for the kids. The kids have been cooped up. Now they're back at school. And now the war about masks or not masks in the school and trying to get your schoolwork. There's so much going on. So an outdoor activity or festival like this would definitely come in handy. Just got to watch the pounds, but it's a good experience. A absolutely. I mean, and, and you said it best because the fact, you know, having kids isolated cramped in rooms and things like isn't good for them. It's proven not to be good for the mental health. It's proven to be uh, cause many others to be restless, angry, and a lot of other things, even anxiety. But to be able to get out, to enjoy yourself, activities, food, music, is, is a great prescription. It's a prescription for freedom and to breathe some fresh air out there. So I think that's great. And uh, you know, like you said, it's a lot of work, but you know, people that are passionate, like Shirley, uh, it's rewarding to see other people happy and to see other yeah. people enjoy themselves. And so that is a field that often drives, you know, visionaries, you know, you know that we're driven by the result, what we want to see the outcome to be. And that's always seeing something better happen. Yes, indeed. Our next guest, Noel Roberts, she has a, a foundation, a Noel Roberts Foundation. I had the opportunity of meeting her in person and she is just as, fantastic and jubilating i mean when you get to hear her and see her to just you could just feel the presence 
Noel. Hey. She's so lively. She can lighten up a room. I tell you, she's how are you? Thanks you know. for having me. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Indeed. Well, we can't just stay on this platform that we have. It is just so wonderful to meet phenomenal people like yourself. Thank and you. I thank you for the opportunity to do that. I actually met you because you reached out because you wanted to book Les Brown to come to your event, um, which is uh, September, the September the 9th. 9th, 9th through the 12th. Yes, yeah, so tell us a little bit about that. Now, first of all, Noel, your foundation, the Noel Roberts Foundation, tell us about that, how you came about getting that started, and then we'll move on to your retreat. Sure will, but I first want to give love and energy to that sister, Curly. Oh, my God, amazing, amazing, amazing. I would love to support her in any way, in any way. So the Noel Roberts Foundation was birthed. I was in a unhealthy relationship. And um, I was young. I got married at 18, divorced at 26. And I got to a point where it was like, if I stay, I'm going to die. But if I leave, I don't know what the outcome is, but I got to go. So when I decided um, to divorce my husband, uh, he paid all of the bills. He took up everything. So I didn't know anything financially. So bills were coming in and I got shut off notices for electric and gas and everything. And I called the electric company and I said, you're shutting off my electric. Why, why are you shutting off my electric? And she said, baby, because you didn't pay the bill. So I said, my husband didn't pay the bill. And I don't know what was in my voice that she felt that she needed to help me. So she says, sweetie, go get a pencil and a paper. And she started to give me all of these organizations that assisted you with your utilities, your food, your um, gas, your whatever. And she said, um, and I said, well, how can I help other women not go through this? So she told me to start a nonprofit. I had no idea. I was 26. I had no idea what a nonprofit was. Three kids and I had a child in the belly. And she just told me to call the IRS and tell them you were a 501c3. And I did. I got the application, closed my eyes, and imagined every resource possible that I could think that a woman that was abused should have. And I wrote the application out. Six weeks later, I had my 501c3. Wow. And I started with the food supply giveaway. We did that for 19 years. I started, we fed the homeless. We, um, I had sponsorships with different um, department stores. So what they did was donate furniture. So we would give the shelters in the area a list and we would say, give us 20 women. And we would furnish their homes as they were transitioning out until their own um, apartment or their home. And then it, it just bloomed from there. And then it got to a point where I wanted to be the one that provide the homes. For the women and i wanted to be the one that provided a safe house so as of july the first we have our first safe house here in philadelphia and my sister who passed of covid that's who we named it after that's why i was listening to shirley and i'm like in 1999 when i started my nonprofit. and you know we had so many similar stories so that's where we started with the nonprofit. it's my passion i would do it if i wasn't getting paid a dime it's what i love to do well, that's about the year 1999. That's when Destiny by George was birthed as well. And wow. so, you know, well, you know, Prince said he was going to party like well, I just want to say that. Prince said. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of birthing that happened. He said 2000 party over. We're going yes. hard. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, so you know, you, you have proven, just like Shirley has, that adversity introduces a man or a woman to themselves. And so when adversity came in your life, rather than go and bury yourself, rather than disappear, rather than to just eliminate your presence from this earth, you, you dug down and your pain became your purpose and your purpose has produces incredible power. And, uh, and, and those are the things that life is made of. The fact that, you know, you did not make a, a song, you did not do an album, you did not cut a CD about all the great 
all the terrible things that happened to me and what happened what would you rather, rather you change the tune, you change the sound, you decide you would do something about it. You recognize that surely there are other people like yourself that are going through, that has gone through. And guess what? You're going to be part of the solution. And because of the fact you was willing to do something that you had never done by your own admission, being 26 years old, nonprofit who? <laughs> okay, nonprofit. I don't know him. <laughs> exactly. I was it's like, good. that's what you say, sis. That's what you say. <laughs> exactly. And so I, I applaud you because you took it to another level. You you took it and you was you was unselfish because you recognize the fact that people go through things. You know, and in spite of what we have, often say one of my favorite, one of my favorite quotes come from the saying that says, many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's it's the purpose of God that prevail. And so, you know, we have plans, but he has purpose, yes. you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and when I look back now and I think of all the things that I've been through, I was like, you know what? I'm not here for me. None of us are here for us. Right. We are here. We go through so that we can make somebody else's way a little bit easier, a little bit lighter, a little bit better to navigate. So we are here to serve. That's what yes. we're here for. Whatever capacity gifts God gave you to serve in, that's what we're here for. And mine's in service of assisting people and empowering them to do better and to grow and to provide resources for them so they don't have to make the same mistakes. You know, I always applaud people, and, you know, and in my line of work, I, I come across people often that have gone through things in their life and they think about how do I provide something better for others? And, and, uh, and a safe house is a major undertaking. A safe house is a, not only a major undertaking, but there's a greater need for safe houses than what people realize. And in mm -hmm. so many places, you know, so many places, you know, people who want to start a safe house is often met by the opposition of bigger organizations. And, you know, because, you know, they look at the fact that this is our turf, but it is so important. And I think you'll agree that people are able to be able to access safe houses, access those resources, yes. because yes. when danger happen and when things happen in your life like that, you don't always get a chance to go back and say, well, let me make me my five-year plan. No, you do, just, do, do. it's going to happen now. Now or never. You, you, you don't have uh, you don't have that option to do something different. And so inside of you taking that step, creating safe houses and, and, and doing those type things, how do you how do you feel like it has made a difference in your area there? Because oftentimes people do fall through the crack. People fall through the crack because of just little things. They didn't make the criteria of, of X, Y, Z. Oh boy, you know, you have one, two little children or one too many kids or one child too old or absolutely, whatever. Absolutely. And so, yeah, so safe so houses for, safe for make a difference. For one, in Philadelphia, we don't have enough. We don't have right. enough safe houses. And two, because I'm aware I was a mother with children and yes, I was yes. aware that some places don't take you if you have too many children. If you have absolutely. boys and girls, you have to have the same sex. Or So I made it to where the only criteria was you had to already been away <laughs> from the individual. So I get you from another source. So you have had right. to be yeah. away from your abuser a certain period of time, the exactly. max, the, the minimum three months, because you calling them, because as when you're in love or when you're in a relationship, it's very challenging when you when when some everybody that leave mm -hmm. is not ready to leave Absolutely. they may think they are and then they'll go back but you mm -hmm. put us at risk when you tell someone where we where our location is absolutely so i needed them to be away that's the only criteria they needed to be away from their abuser at minimum three months and then you can come and so instead of going to a shelter you can come to us i love it you have <laughs> rules and you uh, no phone calls they, no one can meet you here. We can transport you to and from your destination. We could transport the kids to and from daycare or school. No one should come here. It's a safe yeah. house. So it's no, like a transition. I need, you to move. No, I need you to move more into the screen. I've been yeah, trying. Yeah, because I was wondering. I was, like, I was trying to adjust. 
No one can see all this beauty. I was wondering. Yeah, I know. Am I there? Now Am you're perfect. There? All right, let me see. Oh, bye. <laughs> Thank you. I was trying to flip and swip the tea so we could pee out, but you know, that's yeah. exactly, you're, you're exactly right about that when it comes to helping um, those that are affected by domestic violence because the, the, the person that's being battered will always feel like there's an obligation to go back thinking you can fix it mm -hmm. or you can help them because that's what that love is, which is, you know, similar to what my foundation does too, the Soul of a Woman Foundation. You have to be actually ready to leave and not look back because then we'll help you get from point A to point B. But that's when you have a made up mind. When you don't, you know, if you think with your heart, you're not going anywhere. But when you've made up in your mind that you're going to keep moving because you know that if you keep moving, there is greater, then we can help you get there. But we're not going to go while you're vacillating back and forth. And then we get you set up and you turn around and bring that abuser into that spot that we set up for you to get a jump start. That's not happening. So we make sure yeah. that you're making a clean break before we help you That's get to point A to point B as far as helping with rental and stuff like mm -hmm. that right now. And if you need an emergency stay, you know, put you up in a hotel. But we're not putting you up in a hotel for you to bring the abuser in there for you to lay up. And yeah. it's hard to figure those people out because people are clever. People know the system. But you just have to trust yourself and... Um, and don't look for those things. But when it shows right. up, you have to take action immediately. Immediately. Exactly. And <laughs> and for me, it's about the kids, too, because I went through the same thing you went to. I have two boys, two girls. So mm -hmm. any shelter that was available, you had to, they wanted to separate. Now, you yeah. already traumatized. Yeah. Why would you traumatize the children by having them detached from you and staying in different locations and stuff? So, I chose to just be homeless because I said, I'd rather us be together than apart. So that's why my heart is tender towards helping yeah. individuals with young kids, especially when they're little kids, because that's what I went through. You know, wow. and, and it speaks to, it speaks to really your ingenuity because the fact I have often advocated for independent safe houses and independent organizations because oftentimes there are, uh, you know, a lot of the shelters are state run. They're run by the coalitions who get funding. So they give them certain criteria. And I've yeah. seen it over the years evolve because, you know, this thing that we continue to deal with domestic violence is evolving. We begin to learn more. And so in time past, we operated from an ideology like all men are bad. I can recall my time in working for shelters that they would not allow a woman to come to shelter if her son was over 13. So could you imagine, as you just said, Dr. Uh, Dr. Val, here it is, you have your girls, you have everyone there, but now you're telling me that I can't bring my son in because he's 14 years old. And my theory, to, my theory that supports that is saying that, well, he's 14, he may be taking on the behaviors of the perpetrator, and that's a bunch of baloney. Because as you said, when the family is already traumatized, you don't want to add more trauma to it. Who's to say that that 14-year-old boy has not been a great help to his mom with the younger sibling? Who's to say that 14-year-old boy has not stood in the gap inside of that? Who's to say that his sisters don't feel some sense of protection because he's there? But if we eliminate him because of the fact he's what? A male and 14, what we've really done is add an insult to the injury with the family. So that's where organizations such as Soul of a Woman Foundation, as well as your, uh, as well as your organization, is so innovative because the fact you you take those that are oftentimes rejected, you oftentimes prepare those for the next step, and that's where collaboration come in at. That uh, literally the large organization ought to be willing to work with the other because the fact that you actually cover things that they do not, and so I applaud exactly. you because. It sounds like what you have is like, like to call a transitional safe house. So yes. they're coming from the main shelter, which gives them enough time to have been away yes. from the perpetrator. Now, as you transition to that next step, we can help you here. But, hey, 
you know, you don't you don't put our number on social media. You don't put our location out like that. You definitely don't tell the perpetrator, okay, I'm down on the corner of Elm Street and Miller. No, you know, it still has to be rules because there are other people that are also involved and their lives are at danger. And I think that the general public don't have a great, do not have a sufficient enough understanding of how important these things are, these type of organizations are. So I applaud you. And I want to I wanna share a story of this woman. This woman I met, um, she left her abuser. She was dating this guy. She had five children. They weren't by him. And she decided to leave. But she left and went back. She said, I'm going to just go back and get my clothes. She asked her girlfriend to go back with her. Now, this gentleman worked at a gasoline company. He was those big trucks that fill up the gas stations. He worked for one of those companies. So she go back in the house, her and a girlfriend go upstairs to pack her clothes and they hear someone coming downstairs. So they don't, they just think that he's just in the house or whatever. They don't think he's doing anything. So the girlfriend starts to smell gasoline. By the time they figured out what this man was doing, the girlfriend jumped out the window and the house caught fire. The man had pulled the toes into, he had that big truck put the hole in the basement and fill the basement up with gasoline and then set the house on fire. But he wasn't bright because he was still in the basement. So he died while trying to kill her. So what she did was she got burnt 90% of her body and she was on the talk show, the doctors, and they had to do multiple surgeries on her. They sponsored her because he was burnt over 90% of her body and with a coma for six months. So going back, I don't, I don't want nobody that's going to go back because this is the dangers that you could put other people in. Had her girlfriend not jumped out the window, her girlfriend would have burnt it as well. So I'm grateful she's a but this, that stories like that will share tell you those are the dangers of when you're not ready and you bring others in because you're you're involved right. in other people's in your danger. Right. We see so we have to be very careful. We hear constant stories like that and also where you know the person trying to help you gets killed because they're trying to help. So you know you it's it's a precaution that we need to take when we're bringing people into our mess, our drama, and, and I say mess and drama because we allow it to happen. And we allow it to happen because we're emotionally tied into those individuals because we mm -hmm. love them. And other people see more than what we see. We just see what's in front of us and say, oh, this person will never hurt, hurt me when he's constantly hurting you. He's hitting you. He's hurting you. He's stripping you of your... Um, capable ability to function and be who you are he is hurting you but you don't see it like that when you're in the frame you're so caught up and wrapped up in the fact of what this what used to be to you don't see what is before oh i can now. fix them i can mm -hmm. fix them <laughs> yeah we I get caught them. up <laughs> no you can't and, and, yeah, we, we, we are caught up in that imagination of our mind of what used to be, thinking it can be again, yeah. and not looking at the reality of what's before us. But your real foundation, and Noel Roberts Foundation, you're sponsoring a retreat called Diamonds Wellness Retreat. Tell us about that and how people can find out more about that. Absolutely. The Diamonds Wellness Retreat is a retreat we're having in Curacao, September the 9th to the 12th. It's the island 70 miles away from Aruba. And this retreat is going to sponsor our safe house and other efforts that we're going to do with the Noel Roberts Foundation. We have great speakers. We have Dolores E. Jordan, who is Michael Jordan's sister. We have Carvin Hagen, the Grammy Award winning um, music producer. We have Ron Despain, author and motivational coach. We have, oh my gosh, we have Jane Bond. We have the amazing Les Brown. Um, we have so many speakers. I feel as though I'm leaving somebody out. We have me, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing Noel. Yes. So this retreat is for those individuals like us who serve others. And sometimes it can be taxing. 
And we're so busy pouring into other people that we get drained and we forget to recharge and do self-care. So this is for us to restore, renew, and reset our mind, bodies, and soul so we can go back out and serve like no other baby and learn how to change our bottom line. New ways to make more money by serving better, doing smarter things, and just being a little bit more wiser about our self-care and the care of others. So that's what we'll be doing. Everyone that's coming, they are going to be spoiled. They have the speakers. It's a two-day conference. It, the first night's our meet and greet. The um, Everyone gets a three-hour spa treatment. They get a diamond wellness luxury gift box. We're going to have a ball. I'm excited. And all the funds go towards this safe house. A three-hour spa treatment. Yes, you do. You get a one hour massage and then you get two hours of all the other amenities at the spa. The meditation pool, the saunas, you get your hair and your nails bleed. <laughs> so we're going to have a ball. They're going like to be they say, spoiled. Like they say, Noel, take me away. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I really want to love on some folks and pour into some folks because it's draining sometimes emotionally Very draining Very um draining. caring for others and motivating others it does something to your energy so you have to create that balance and what other place but a little paradise called carousel absolutely, absolutely. does your organization um deal with mental illness as well I have not tapped into that, but I'm, I'm quite sure we did unintentionally or like, but because to be abused, it does affect your mental. And if you, because I remember being in a state of being lost, like I really didn't know who I was, who I am now, all of this energy is energy from when I was married. This was the energy that I didn't let loose because this is me. But when I was married, I was young, but I felt like I was 88 years old waiting for hospice. I felt dead inside. And I think that's a mental illness. That's depression. That's whatever. It's a sickness. So I probably did deal with some type, but I haven't tapped into that. The rest of my family love mental health, but I, I, it's a, um, it's a touchy area that I'm not ready for, I think. It. Well, I, 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 I asked ready. you about that because I know that when we deal with domestic violence, it absolutely does um, tap into the psychic of a person because the mental capacity to function gets diminished because of the abuse. So that's why I asked that question. And also at this wellness retreat, you know, when you say that- Absolutely. You, you know, you-, you uh, working with individuals and you get drained, you can't help but sometimes take on the weight of these different cases. Because I said, Dr. J and I, we needed a break. You know, we don't just do we don't just do this broadcast on Tuesdays. He has a nonprofit, Destiny by Choice. I have the Soul of a wow. Woman wow. and Arise by VNP, which is my speakers bureau. And I'm a minister at the church. Dr. J is a pastor, so he ministers too. So I have all this responsibility emotionally. And I have four kids and the grandkids and everything. And, you know, people calling me prayer, have everything going on. So yes. it does yes. get draining. So I know this Diamond Wellness Retreat is well needed. Now, it says Diamond Wellness Retreat are men able to come. Yes, it's men and well. women. It is men and women. Okay. Initially, my first thought was, oh, I want to have, I went to Curacao just for business. And I was like, this is paradise. I want to have a women's retreat. But as it grew, men were calling me like, I want to come. I want to mm-hmm. go. And and I didn't mention I'm a nurse. So I deal with mental health at work. But yeah. to deal with them in the nonprofit arena, I haven't. So this wellness retreat, it's men and women. And we are, they need to be loved on as well. I cannot exclude my brothers. I cannot exclude, no matter what race you are, I cannot exclude you. We're all human beings relearning and unlearning this trauma in our lives from childhood. And if you are someone who is constantly evolving and constantly want to be better, you are 
you are learning yourself and unlearning all these past behaviors, generational curses and, and uh, stuff from your ancestors that you didn't even know you had. And every time you're around a group of people who are on the same vibe and they want to be born again and learn, you get to grow and evolve a little bit more. So that's what my intention is to do, to love on some folks, to unlearn some past unhealthy behaviors and come back better. You know, I applaud you because, you know, you talk about diamond wellness and I thought it was a great point because we're now living in a day and time. And I think the pandemic has brought it even more a reality that what we recognize now is that the key word now is wellness. We used to talk about mental illness, but now we're talking about emotional wellness because what that means is that we have to be well emotionally, you know, as as what well, as we are physically. So that means that when we're pouring out of ourselves, when we're all those things there, we we actually deplete ourselves. So we have to be replenished. We have to find ways to relax our our cells and our body, our mind, our wave, everything about us has to be replenished. So emotional wellness is so important. And we often talk about that with, the, with domestic violence. Long before a victim is ever beaten up, they're beaten down with words. They're beaten down with those actions. So if we can begin to heal them emotionally, they heal there. That becomes the thing that solidifies the healing. Because you know what? A black guy, all that goes away with cocoa, butter, and time. But if you are not healed emotionally, if the emotional healing yeah. does, uh, does not take place, and there's not a wellness there, then guess what? You're basically still you're still injured, you're still fractured, you're still uh, you're still broken, and those things have to be healed. So retreats such as this could be a very great, very great tool and resource for a person to begin to put it back together again. Yes, thank you. Yes, absolutely. And, I, and I'm glad you I named it nine that people needed the help, you know, especially oh, yes. at a time like this. People yes. needing an outlet, need somewhere to go, and don't know where. And this is a perfect opportunity to say, listen, pack up your bags, get away from it all. Let's just relax and enjoy and reconnect with you, who you are, because people have been. They've been in the trenches for the last 18 months. It, it has been hard. Yes. It yes. has been extremely it's been, hard. It's been an eye opener. Listen, people had to be stuck at home with each other, right? Some of us, if we have partners, we go to work to get a break, right? Yes. I, the, my first thought was, the people that are getting abused, the children that are being sexually abused, oh my. they have no skin. Oh they my. cannot run to school. They can't go out and play to get oh that break from being abused. They are constantly in the house with this person. They said that the murder rate went up. They said that the sexual abuse rate went up because yes. people were stuck in the house with people who are mentally ill and have habits that are unhealthy for the community, their household, and for themselves. So people need a break. We, we've, we've been through a lot. It wasn't just this pandemic. God was saying, I'm shutting y'all all up to be quiet and pay attention. People weren't paying attention to the children in the household. They weren't paying attention to their own relationship. People got to see people who they for who they really yes. were. And it's, it's oh my God, that was something else. Repeat that. Repeat that last. We lost so many. Repeat I said, that if last you lost question. someone, if you lost someone, that's just on top of all the abuse, the drama, and yes. everything else that was going on in your life. You had to deal with death, but couldn't really deal with death because you weren't allowed to see the person. You weren't allowed to properly bury them. There was, we all are traumatized. All of us need mental health. I don't care who you are. I don't Absolutely. care who you are. We all need to be assessed or talking to somebody. I, my first time I spoke to a therapist in 2020. I called up like, yes, I'm, I'm a member. <laughs> I need help. Mm -hmm. It was scary. 
Yeah, and especially when people weren't able to go out and do events like they normally do and, you know, to get an outlet is bad enough. Okay, you can't go to work, you can't go to church, you can't go to school, you can't go visit your friends and you can't go out to a restaurant to eat. You can't go in the park. You couldn't go to the beach. So it was a whole new psychic going on that caused people to snap. Yeah. So yeah. this Diamonds Wellness Retreat is absolutely positively needed across the globe. And I know a lot of work goes into doing it. So, I, I mean, it's only a few months, but hopefully you'll start planning on this one right after this one here. Oh, yeah. We already, oh, May 23rd, we're booked Lisa Nichols. So we will um, be in Bahamas for another retreat. Okay. That's awesome. So we got to have you on a couple of months prior to talk about it so that people can, because okay. I'm sure it's going, they're going to need it even more than, than they do right now. Because a lot's going down, a lot's changing, yeah. a lot's shifting. So it yeah. would definitely be needed. So tell the audience how they can uh, connect with you, the websites and also about how they can connect with the Noel Roberts Foundation. Absolutely. So you can log on to the diamondwellnessretreat.com for any information on the event. The Noel Roberts Foundation, we are actually revamping that and going to change it to the safe house name. But you can find me on Noel Roberts on Facebook, on Instagram. Noel Roberts Foundation is on Instagram as well. So you can you can find me everywhere. <laughs> Yay! Awesome. Thank you so much. I told you she was amazing, Dr. J. Absolutely. Uh, so thank y'all for having me on in a radio show. You know we have so this is exciting. Um, I, I love I love the platform that you have. You're sharing people with the world. Like yes, who knew um, all of these things that everybody does? That woman Shirley. I was like trying to not cry because I knew I was coming up next. But I mean, I love what she does, and I'm so serious about yes. assisting her. And either one of you, you have um, nonprofit, and that's what I'm passionate yes. about: service. That's what I'm here Absolutely. for. And we need donations. So you can donate yeah. I to can. the Diamond can. Wellness Retreat as well. If you can't go, send a donation because maybe yeah. she can sponsor somebody that really needs it. You can't go to the Chicken Wing Festival. Go to michiganchickenwingfestival.com and buy some tickets. And so that she can give people to come in because, you know, some people don't have the resources even to buy a 10 or $20 ticket, yeah. especially if they have a bunch of kids. So, you know, we're in small nonprofits doing great and mighty things. And the only way we can do it is if we're empowered by you, the people. So we appreciate you and Shirley, the, the magnificent, extraordinary, beautiful women. Thank that you. have grace hot topics from the soul. Thank Absolutely. you. And we couldn't be here pleasure. without you too. So thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, until soon. All right. Well, having said all that, listen, it is a great thing, but I do not want to close this show without making the people aware of something very special that is about to happen for you, Dr. Val. And I want to be one of the first to say congratulations to you because in just another couple of weeks, as you are going to be honored and you're going to be recognized there uh, with the even Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. And the fact of the matter is the fact that bestowing another doctorate and all these things that are happening your way. Uh, that's coming up. Is that September 11th? Yes, it is. It's September 11th. Congratulations. So I'm so, yeah, I'm excited about it. And, you know, uh, I was talking to Noelle and she was like, are you prepared for it? Are you ready for it? And I said, you know what? I just can't get used to this because, you know, when you're used to just working behind the scenes and 
it's just so much still have to be done and so many people exactly. are broke and so many people are lost. And you know, not to mention Dr. J, you got it last year with from President Obama. The year no, four years. 2017. Yeah. Yes. You got the presidential award from um uh, Barack Obama. So, yes. you know, yes. we've been working in the trenches and we've been making things happen. And I thank God for individuals that nominated us to see the work we're doing yes. when nobody yes. else was looking. So I really, really do appreciate that. And, you know, I'm humbled. I'm definitely humbled about it. And, you know, shocked but humbled because, you know, it is Would a great award. You deserve it, Dr. Val. It's the same thing I said. You know, you 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 just underscored it. We do the work because we're driven to do it. It's part of our purpose. And I and I believe when we look back on it, I think it was Sir Winston Churchill, uh, maybe uh, that said that we make a we make a we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And mm. we give of our service. We give. We give and we give and we give not looking for recognition, but we look, give looking for change and to make mm -hmm. change inside of the world that you live in. And definitely you have made the change in so many ways through your platform from uh, the soul of a woman foundation, from your books that you've sold from the arise from arise by BNP, from the many things that you're involved in. I think about the fact of just what we did a few months ago when the graduates was graduating, you know, oh. you, we brought graduates on and, and, and we blessed every one of those graduates. We wanted to sow into their lives. Why? Because and we, we didn't know all of them either. Season. We didn't know all of them, but that is what underscores what I call true leadership. It underscores that because the fact you understand that just your simple act of obedience can make a difference in someone's life forever. So I applaud you. Congratulations. I want to definitely highlight this next week when we're on again. Uh, everything, this uh, great event is going to take place. Uh, is it going to be in Fort Lauderdale this time? Yes, it's at the Bahia Mar uh, down on the beach. The hotel wow. is wow. sending a representative there. So, like I said, I'm very excited about it. Absolutely. And, and nervous. At the <laughs> and same <nervous>. time. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited and nervous. And, but, you know, the greatest, greatest reward, I got to tell you, the greatest reward that I get is when someone that I don't know that I've touched reached up to me, reached out, or uh, they saw me in a store or some in church and say, hey, I know you, you did this for me, and, and I don't remember. That is exactly. my greatest reward because Absolutely. that means that I did it from my heart. I didn't look at who you were uh, exactly. or your circumstances. I just did it because I was led to do it and I had a heart to do it. So that is the greatest reward that I've ever received is when I have individuals come and say, you helped me, you saved me. When nobody else reached out, you did it. And I thank God for that. Well, you're so well deserving of it. And we thank God for you. And we'll continue to celebrate you. And uh, we're looking forward to, to have more information on. So what a way to wrap up our first night back after being on our retreat. Awesome guests tonight. Just people Absolutely that are giving. Awesome. I mean, this is just exactly what we're about, seeing differences made by people who make difference. And so this is absolutely great. I know, between Shirley and the Chicken Wing Festival and Against All <laughs> Odds and Noel Roberts with the uh, wellness, and wellness and yeah. her foundation that she's she's running and doing things. And, and just, you know, all of us have things in common, domestic violence, you know, yes. you're a man, but uh, definitely yes. by choice, it brings yes. awareness to domestic violence. We all Absolutely. are doing domestic violence, and I'm so glad that we've connected and crossed paths so that we can empower one another and strengthen one another in our different areas. We're from different states and different cities, but we're doing the work because we're doing it from our heart. And, you know, what I want to encourage people is, you know, these organizations that we bring to you, we bring to you because we trust them, we believe in them, and we Absolutely. want you to support them. Don't wait until you have a tragedy or until something happens when you want to reach out. Support now. Lay the foundation so that 
you won't have to go through this because organizations like ours will empower you to find your greater self and also to help some maybe a family member that may be a victim of sexual abuse, domestic Absolutely. violence, cancer. We have organizations that you can support that are grassroots, that are reaching mm -hmm. hearts and empowering lives. Thank you for joining us for another Hot Topics from the Soul. Good night and God bless until next week. Thank you. God bless. God bless.